Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review the FPV DVR module for the Ishin EV100. I've already added the DVR using the Ishin Pro DVR, but this module allows you a plug and play solution and it's much more comfortable to use. Inside the box, we're getting the DVR module, 2.5 mm to 3.5 mm cables. You're actually getting two of them. One is a shorter one and the other one is longer. So it allows you some flexibility when mounting the DVR on your goggles. You're also getting this double-sided tape and the instructions manual. You can power the DVR module using the balance connector of your EV100 battery, or you can use a micro USB cable. This is just to power the model, it accepts five volts and you're not going to be able to flash any firmware or to access the contents of your SD card using this connector. On the top side we have the zero and one switches for the DVR. When it's set to zero it's going to be set to DVR playback and when it's set to one it's going to be set to DVR function. What it alters is actually the input and the output of this 2.5 millimeters video jack. So when it's on one, it's gonna be on video in, and when it's set to zero, this is gonna be on video out, and it will enable you to play back the recorded videos on your EV100 goggles. On the left side, we have the micro SD slot, which supports up to 32 gigabytes micro SD cards. On the front, we have these three control buttons, and this LED indicator that indicates if the module is working, and also if it's recording. The navigation is done very similarly to the Ishin Pro DVR. The only difference that I found is in the firmware is in the playback menu. The model is about the same size as the Ishin Pro DVR. It's just a little bit thicker and the Pro DVR is wider. It weighs 10.8 grams, so it's almost a gram heavier than the Ishin Pro DVR. In order to connect the module to the EV100 goggles, you will first have to connect the 2.5 millimeters jack to this port over here. Then you can mount it wherever you would like. I think the best position to mount this module is to the bottom of the goggles on this point. Then connect the 3.5 mm jack to the AV in of the goggles. And use this balance connector in order to power the DVR. You can see that now the LED indicator is working. Set the switch to one. And in order to start recording, just press the left button. And you can see this LED indicator is going to start blinking. If you want to stop the recording, just press this button again and the recording will be stopped. Because right now the goggles are going to output the video into the module, you're not gonna have any recording indication inside the goggles themselves. So the only indication you will have is on the LED indicator of the module. In order to see if you're recording, you can change the input to AV in and you do it by long pressing this button until you're gonna hear three beeps. But then, of course, the goggles are not going to output the received video. So the only reason to switch to AV in is just to play the recorded video that was saved in the DVR and also to change the DVR settings. Entering the settings menu is done by long pressing the play button. Then you can move between the options by pressing the forward or backward buttons. If you want to change a setting, press the play button button. The resolution of the VGA is 640 by 480 pixels, D1 is 720 by 480 pixels, and the HD has a resolution of 1280 by 480 pixels. The VGA and D1 has 4 to 3 aspect ratio, whereas the HD is recorded on 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Then you can choose to record sound or not. You can choose the video time when it will pass this time a new file will be created. We're going to set it on 10 minutes. We can move to the other menu by long pressing the menu again. In this section, we can format the card. We can change the language. We can do a system reset, change the light frequency between 60 Hertz to 50 Hertz. And we can change the TV output between PAL to NTSC. It is important to use the right format. So if your camera is PAL, use PAL. And if it's NTSC, use NTSC, otherwise your video might get cropped. Accessing the DVR menu is done by long pressing the forward button. Then it's gonna switch to the DVR mode. Then you can switch between all the videos just by pressing the forward and backward button. 
and if you want to play the video just press the play button and it's going to be played if you want to change the playback speed just press the forward again and then you can choose the playback speed you can also change direction now it's in reverse pausing the video is done by pressing the play button if you long press the play button you're going to access the menu then you can delete the video just by pressing delete you can delete all or the one you're going to select you can also change the volume and if you move to the next frame by holding the play, you're gonna see the same menu we've seen before in the settings menu. In order to exit this menu, long press the play button. And then if you want to exit the DVR mode, just long press the forward button. And now we're back to the AV in mode. When I first used this model, this AV cable worked fine, but when I used this one, it didn't work and I saw some flickering and I discovered that it was because the O-ring wasn't properly inserted over here. You can see that the rubber ring is just close to the end of the connector. So first of all, if you have any problems, just try the other cable and you can just use tweezers in order to get it inserted to the right place. And now hopefully this cable is going to work properly. However, I do recommend you to use the shorter cable because it's going to be less messy. And anyhow, I think you need to, to place the DVR model closer to the balance port of the battery because it's going to be much more comfortable to use. So if you already bought the Ishin EV100, I think this model is a great add-on and you should consider purchasing it especially because the price is not very high and adding the DVR functionality to the EV100 I think is a very crucial feature because you want to be able to play back your videos and especially if you lost your quadcopter in the field it might help you find it and save your quadcopter. There are some few firmware issues with this module and it might be fixed by upgrading to the newest Pro DVR firmware but because I'm not 100% sure it uses the same firmware because the DVR playback section is not the same I think it's advisable to wait for Banggood or Ishin to release a special firmware to this model or at least confirm that these two models are using the same firmware before you are going to upgrade using this Pro DVR firmware because it might break your DVR. Hopefully in the near future, Ishin are going to release an upgraded version of the EV100, which is going to fix some of its flaws, and maybe they are going to include a built-in DVR, or at least throw in this DVR with their upgraded version. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any question about this DVR model, feel free to ask it in the comment section below, and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.